Hi guys, welcome to an episode of Frozen Electronics. Why are we at this bizarre angle? Well, because I'm about to show you something that I've been working on. Um, it's a very simple circuit, but it's very cool and I'm actually very proud of it. And it just worked for the first time, the first time, which never happens for me. Murph Murphy always gets me, but uh, I mean, I guess I did a little bit of debugging before I actually tried it, but I mean, my code was pretty much bang on the first time, so that was very lucky. Um, my USB infrared toy isn't actually here probably for at least another week or so. It's coming from Singapore. It's taking its sweet time, as all mail does from Asia. Um, but in the meantime, I was thinking, I mean, uh, A, I've been wanting to build a remote for my uh, CD carousel that I tore down a while back because it has a whole bunch of remote features that um, some of which aren't actually on the front panel so I've been working on uh, thinking about that and also B, I have both an infrared LED and sensor lying around that I haven't ever really used on any of the projects so I decided what the hell I may as well try it um, so I've been coding away um, I'll go into more depth soon I'll make another video tutorial Although Dave Jones at the EEV blog did a very good job of explaining it, um, and I actually uh, I used not I didn't use his code, but I followed his ideas, did the exact same measurements he did, um, and uh, using documentation that I found online because I don't actually have a remote to work from, I have to look and see what other people. Luckily, someone had actually um, created a chart of all the codes for all the old Pioneer CDs because they use the same uh, codes as the infrared remotes do for the um, control port on the back just by chance. I guess it made it easier to program in for the guys making the system. But anyway, you can, you can build little serial port things that will control the CD players through a wired connection and the guy put in the notes, these are actually the exact same codes as the infrared um, and then I remember that infrared codes are always least significant bit first and they're split into four uh, bytes so there's 32 bits in total and anyway it's just very simple counting I found out that this is a 40 kilohertz carrier wave whereas most things like your TV remote uh, stuff like that it's usually 38 kilohertz just like Dave did on the EEV blog that was 38 kilohertz so 40 kilohertz is actually a bit easier because it makes the numbers all even um, instead of uh, slightly weird numbers at the 38 kilohertz. Oh, the 38 kilohertz divides fairly evenly as well. Anyway, so you're zo you should be zoomed in on my CD player. Here's my little uh, Olimex dev board. I decided I haven't used the ATtiny2313A on anything in quite a while, and I have a dev board that it fits perfectly, um, so I thought, why the hell not? I just wired up one pin going through a 100 ohm resistor to my infrared LED which of course then just goes over to ground and then I have it so that on a button press it sends the infrared code so let's watch the CD player and see what happens <laughs> look at that it turns on and I can turn it off and back on again Oh, I might have just sent it twice by accident. Yeah, I think that is what happened. Notice how it turned off the first time. Watch if I push the button again, and then I don't touch it again. Oh, maybe not. It was turning off again. I don't know if you guys noticed that without me pressing the button. Anyway. So the cool thing is that this code works, um, and the fact that this code works, I have all the other codes. I mean, I have this, I have this huge chart of all the codes for the thing. Um, so I need some ideas from you guys um, on how I should implement all these codes. I don't really, well, I guess I could just make a whole bunch of buttons on here. Um, but there's not a whole lot of room on this dev board. I guess I could, uh, you know, wire up, I could solder up an actual board to make a remote for this thing. Um, the other thing is, too, is that if I'm going to make a remote, it needs to run off of 3 volts.
currently I have this at 20 megahertz, um, which it won't be able to do. Although even at 10 megahertz, actually, it should be able to uh, do the the uh, delays and everything for the carrier frequency fine. So do you guys think that's a good idea? Should I create a little board with all the buttons on it and just have an ATtiny2313, an infrared LED, and just do it that way with a whole bunch of buttons? Or I'm trying to think if there's a, a more, uh, what's the word? Uh, elegant, a more elegant solution. I was thinking about having um, a row of LEDs, one for each um, possible function, and as you push the button, it'll cycle through all the functions, and then when you let go, every time you let go of the button, a timer starts, and after, I don't know, 1200 milliseconds or something, whatever LED is lit, that's the code that it'll send. Something like that, possibly. Um, or, I'm trying to think, or maybe a rotary switch. Um, you choose the function you want and then press a button. The reason I'm trying to think of ideas is because I don't have a whole lot of tactile buttons to spare. Um, I guess I can always order some more at some point, but right now I've got I think maybe five or six in my kit and I don't really want to waste them all on one project. Well, I guess I could, I mean I guess there's no big deal about it, but um, I guess I could have like a shift button and have, you know, five buttons, and then I could have ten potential um, codes, or I could even have a double shift and have fifteen potential codes, something like that. Anyway, if you guys want to leave in the comments ideas for how I should implement this, that would be awesome. Remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel, and keep an eye out for the Smartboard um, giveaway that's coming up soon. I just got the notification that my Smartboards were shipped to me um, on Tuesday the 4th, uh, February and they should be here hopefully by the end of this week and as soon as they come in I'm gonna film the review video and that should be really really cool you guys will get to see all the different smart boards they make I'm gonna do an in-depth review also I can't give any details away at all other than um, a big company who makes some really cool stuff uh, emailed me back and said that they're gonna let me review something of theirs once they release their new line which is coming out in the next couple of months so leave that up to your imagination how many big companies are out there that make cool stuff right so it could be anything but they haven't promised it to me but they said that um, I have to email them back once I see their new line has come out and then as soon as they have a spare unit they'll send one to me so that's pretty cool um, anyway thanks a lot for watching guys please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe Check out frozenelectronics.com. You can always get the most updated info there. I'm your host, Max. Thanks again for watching.